Hi, I'm Marissa. And I am Jordan. Today, Marissa and I are going to be discussing a topic from the year 1918. What will it be, Marissa? Today, I'll be speaking about the Spanish flu. So, most of us have probably heard of the Spanish flu, right? I know I have. <laughs> but if you haven't, it's okay. I'm going to tell you about it right now. So, the Spanish flu was an influenza pandemic. It was the most severe pandemic in recent history. 500 million people were infected worldwide, which was about one third of the population at the time. One third of our current population is about 2.6 to 2.7 billion. That's a good chunk. <laughs> yeah. So, and um, so far with the COVID-19, there have been about 49.1 million people infected. So you could see why it's called the most severe pandemic. Yeah. Is it a global pandemic or a regular pandemic? It's a global one. Well, you know what I mean by that, right? No, I don't. Because saying global pandemic is saying like the automatic teller ATM machine. It's redundant. Pandemic by... means world. Does it? Yeah. So when people say global pandemic, it, I kind of laugh on the inside a little bit because what they're saying is it's a worldwide, worldwide virus it says uh over a whole country or the world yeah pandemic pandemic is the only word it's a nice packaged word you can use it so you don't have to say global just a tidbit yeah thank you <laughs> okay <laughs> i think i think that's what you do what we're doing i think our purpose is to educate people like saying et cetera <laughs> Okay, so it was estimated that 50 million people died of the Spanish flu. In today's numbers, that would be 240 million people. And so far with COVID-19, 1.24 million people have died from that virus. So, you know, just a comparison. Yeah. And the mortality rate was high in people younger than 5 years old, 20 to 40 years old, and 65 years and older. Wow. So, you know, there's just small windows where you were... You were safe? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be safe. Wouldn't you be safe? We'd be safe. No, between 20 and 40 years old. Oh, I'm I'm giving away my age. You, what like, are you, 42? <laughs> I'm about to step out and get into the safety zone. So the age group, 20 to 40, that's usually the safe group. Like, you might get sick, but you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why this pandemic was very unique because... It was even killing people in that group. So with no vaccine to protect against the influenza infection and no antibodies to treat secondary bacterial infections that are caused by the flu. So you can't use antibiotics to help with the flu because the flu is a virus. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever been prescribed antibiotics when you have the flu, it's because your immune system's weakened and more than likely you're going to get a bacterial infection and it's more than likely going to be pneumonia because usually those go hand in hand and pneumonia is it is a bacterial um, infection. Yeah. So that's why you if you've ever been prescribed antibiotics, it's for that. It's not for the a virus. Yeah. Because people get confused. I'm a pharmacy tech and people would be like, my doctor needs to prescribe antibiotics. I have the flu and it's just like, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. It's two different things. It's like, yeah. it's like difference with venomous and poisonous. Yeah. It's, there's, it's a difference, but it, I mean, it could get confusing, you know, because when you're sick and you get prescribed antibiotics, they make you feel better. So when you're sick with the flu, you want to feel better. And that's kind of their go-to yeah. thing. So without any of those things, what did they do to protect themselves? Well, they would be in isolation. They would quarantine they use good personal hygiene. They use disinfectants. And they limited public gatherings. Sounds familiar, right? Yeah, we could learn a lot from these people. Well, there was also anti-mask people at that time. Really? <laughs> yes. In the Rocky Mountain News, one of the headlines was, Mask not popular. Many people ignore health board rules. Did they wear Make America Great hats? <laughs> They were the first people. That's when, right after them, that's when America was great for the first time. And then <laughs> let's get back to, let's make America back to the way it was in 1920. And there was even a, a woman, she was a lawyer. She argued uh, with the mayor that the mask ordinance was absolutely unconstitutional 
because it was not legally enacted. And as a result, every police officer who arrested somebody who didn't wear a mask was personally liable. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's just the American thing to do. <laughs> what is that about? Like, it's a bit of cloth and you put it over your face. I mean, that's better than a ventilator. It's, um, well, f- f- from when we're children, we're kind of um, taught that we have constitutional rights and that we shouldn't be made to do things. And then the way people have gone about telling people to wear masks during a pandemic, I'm an American, right? And I'm proud to be an American, but we are a very selfish group. And they came out saying, oh, you got to protect the old people, you know, um, wear a mask. And I remember sitting there and thinking, old people, fuck the old people. I don't want to get sick. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) that was my mentality. And instead of them telling people you're going to get sick, wear a mask, they make it about others and Americans. Well, we're we're a selfish bunch and we're kind of like, no, fuck them. If I don't want to don't want to wear a mask, I'm not going to wear one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wear one because I don't want to get sick. Yeah. But like you think of like Japanese people, they get a common cold. They're wearing a mask out in public. But they weren't raised the way Americans were raised. I was just about to say, they're, they're very opposite. They're very uh, considerate people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, they're very overly considerate. They don't want to embarrass themselves by being obnoxious. Yeah. And see, we are we are taught from children, like, you have rights. And if you don't want to do this, you need to be loud about it. And it's just, but people choose the wrong fucking thing to be loud about. Like you're, people were seriously protesting in front of a Baskin Robbins because they weren't open. Mm-hmm. It's just like, yeah. pick your priorities. Yeah. Like it's just, it's crazy. And I'm, I am somebody. It doesn't matter if I agree with it or not. If somebody wants to protest, I think that's their right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I personally will not go and protest because I can't have ice cream. But yeah. if somebody else wants to do that, that's to me. That's their right to do that. Yeah. I've lost business because of it. I had a lady email me and saying that she said, if you guys are wearing masks, I'm not going to go because I have this condition. I'm no. Like, well, but maybe a wine tour is not good for you then. Maybe you should stay home. Yeah, exactly. And, and, be, and be protected because your your health is already fragile as it is because you can't put a piece of cloth over your mask. <laughs> so over if, your if, face. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, but you can't put a piece of cloth over your face because you'll die <laughs> that's not true <laughs> no so maybe you shouldn't be going out on a wine tour that's unnecessary on a bus and even you know you're in an enclosed box you know so you have to wear a mask mm-hmm. we're trying to make it work there's no more than 50 percent, you know capacity and i'm venting the bus now we're making the best of it we need to continue working the fact that she said that and i said well don't come yeah don't you shouldn't be risking your health yeah or in or anybody else's yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. I don't know. Let, let's wait for... How about you stay home and then once this is all over and you don't have to wear a mask, then you've got the whole... You could do whatever, you know? Yeah. But why is these so many people who are quote-unquote not snowflakes are the most fragile people? They all have these conditions. I never knew about this before. <laughs> that all these people have these breathing conditions. There is <laughs> no doctor on this planet that would instruct somebody who has a health condition to not wear a mask during a pandemic. Yeah. It, it's not happening. I, I just don't understand. Like, when they go to bed, what if they accidentally, like, sleep on their stomach <laughs> and their face gets covered by the pillowcase? They're going to die. Yeah, they're going to die in their sleep. Like, this is crazy. Like, I've, I've slept, you know, when it's really, really cold. Mm hmm. Like it gets so cold that my nose is getting cold. So I'll, I'll put my whole head under the covers yeah. and like create a seal. <laughs> and I'll sleep a full 10 hours, wake up and like I don't have any air under these, <laughs> this giant thick comforter. I can't imagine what they're going through. Yeah, I, I just get stuck on that because there's no way you that you know they're lying. I know they're lying. But the fact that you're 22 years old and you have this breathing condition and because you have a, you know, you're a political party, like that's. Yeah, like, let me finish this and then we'll we'll yeah, get yeah, to for sure, modern for sure. let, what's happening in modern times right now. Let's let's hear about Spanish flu. <laughs> okay, 1918. So, that's where we're at. <laughs> so how did it start? Right, this particular strain came from birds. Now, mm. did somebody eat the bird? I don't know. I don't know how it transferred from bird to human. Yeah, did it? Bird, somebody pet things. a bird? <laughs> like I don't know. Yeah. But the first re- the first recorded case came from not Spain but from Kansas, mm, or to some people, Kansas. <laughs> and the reason why it's called the Spanish flu is because 
because Spain didn't fight in World War One, so their news and their newspapers weren't overwhelmed with news from the war. Yeah. So they were able to give updates continuously on the pandemic. So people thought, oh, it came from there because they just keep talking about it. Yeah. But it didn't come from Spain. So they're, they're the only ones telling the news. Yeah. So therefore, like, oh, that 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 Spanish news station. <laughs> <laughs> Telemundo. <laughs> yeah. The weather girl in the, in the miniskirt, she keeps talking about this flu. They're all Spanish. Yeah, so that's how it became known as the Spanish flu. But the first recorded case, as I said, was from Kansas on a military base in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And that's how that's how historians believe it's it was spread because they were being shipped out and they were going to different locations and then they're in close quarters with one another. Yeah. And then they went to Europe and they were with the allies and spreading it to them. Yeah, I was just thinking like you're intermingling with different groups. Yeah. And all of you on planes, you're traveling all over the world. It takes maybe one or two people from each meeting to catch that. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons why World War One ended was because of the flu, because soldiers were just dying. So it's a, an American flu? No. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, well, I... well, it could be, but it's, it's hard to pinpoint where exactly it began. But there is there is a historian named Mark Humphreys from Canada, and he got a hold of some records that come from one of the side stories of the war, which was the mobilization of 96,000 Chinese laborers to work behind the British and French lines on World War One's Western Front. And he believes that may have been the source of the pandemic. In his report, he produces evidence that a respiratory illness that struck northern China in November 1917 was later identified by Chinese health officials as identical to the Spanish flu. Sounds so familiar, right? Yeah. Because that's what happened with COVID in, in November of um, 2019. Yeah, for sure. They had an illness. They try to, I guess, cover it up or not tell other people about other countries about it. And then it turned out it was COVID. He also found medical records indicating that more than 3,000 of the 25,000 Chinese labor workers were transported across Canada en route to Europe starting in 1917. And they ended up in the medical quarantine Many with flu-like symptoms. Yeah. That sounds... Yeah, it's exactly 102 years <laughs> in the past. That's insane. And then another historian named Christopher Langford, he has shown that China suffered a lower mort- mortality rate from the Spanish flu than other nations. He's suggesting that it's because they were able to build an immunity to it because they were the first ones exposed to it. Mm. So yeah, I didn't originate in Spain. Now, they're just assuming based on the evidence that they had, they can't say for sure. It's, you know what I mean? It still could have originated in Kansas. And some people even think in France. So, okay. So it just, you know, it just depends on the evidence. And it's hard to pinpoint because it's so long ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. America always puts the blame on someone else. <laughs> oh my God. Even with like marijuana. <laughs> like, oh, that Mexican thing. <laughs> So in October of 1918, the virus killed an estimated 195,000 Americans. And that was just in one month. So, so far with COVID-19, it's killed over 200,000 Americans since its beginning. Mm -hmm. So in one month alone, in October of 1918, it killed almost the same amount. Wow. So yeah, it was was out of control. And they they had, I guess, stricter procedures because they didn't have a, a vaccine and... They knew how serious it was, so they made everyone ma- wear masks. And Yeah, in some places it was even against the law, so. Yeah. Do you feel like that should have happened here? <sighs> I don't know. Because I don't like the idea of making somebody do something. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, people aren't wearing masks. So it's like, I don't know what to do. I, I think it's the way they approached it of not realizing that we're a selfish bunch and they do this with climate change too what do they do they didn't come out and say hey we're going to give you good paying jobs we're going to clean up the air you're not going to have health issues anymore what did they do they came out and said oh the polar bears who the fuck gives a fuck about the polar bears Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i don't know that's how i see it it's just you have to make it about us about me personally because that's just how we are yeah you know what I'm saying? Well, they did mention they made it about the bees, which is a very important thing. Because without yeah, bees, you have no crops. Come on. You're really going to go talk to somebody who lives out in the country who hunts their own food? Hey, you got to worry about the bees. They're, mm-hmm. nobody, they're not going to give a shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
it's just the way that they uh, approach these situations. They don't do it in the mind frame of an American. They need to, yeah, target it for a person who thinks selfishly. Yes, because I, uh, we're selfish. I'm sorry, but we are. And they don't do that. And then also this Dr. Fauci, and he said this, this is a fact. He told people at first not to wear masks, but he did that because he knew there was a shortage and he knew the healthcare workers wanted it. Yeah. And he didn't want people to go and buy them in mass. But yeah. we did that anyway. Yeah. So you go out there and you give misinformation that masks don't work, don't buy them. And then later you come back and tell us something different. Yeah. Us being a selfish conspirat- a conspiratorial bunch. How do you say that word? I don't know how you say that. Uh, conspiring Yeah, group. like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're going to be like, so is he lying? Like, what the fuck is, what is he doing? Yeah, anything to do, for some reason in America only, the American government has like, what, like reptilian people. <laughs> they have all sorts of like, out of this world type of politicians, but only in America though, not everywhere else. Like we won't talk about the uh, the czar being a reptilian, or it's only United no, States. No, you're Illuminati. not reading the correct conspiracies because I'm not, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> no, it's worldwide. Is it worldwide? <laughs> it is. <laughs> so it's like ancient alien stuff. It's where like they plant- the Queen of England. And oh really? Yeah, it's just. <laughs> I only hear about it with like American celebrities, though, like Lil Wayne and Beyonce. It's like all, only like people that they're familiar with are connected to Illuminati. It's weird, but um, <laughs> let me finish this because okay. <laughs> we can't have American history without a little bit of racism. Oh, of course not. So there was a shortage of nurses, right? Because they were deployed to military camps mm-hmm. in the United States and abroad because of the war, and they refused. To use trained African American nurses. That was probably beneficial for them, though. <laughs> yeah, because then they weren't exposed yeah. to the virus. But can you believe that there's a pandemic happening and you're not going to use these nurses who are trained? Yeah. But because they're black. Yeah, you're not going to use all of your resources. That That's is how racist you are. Insane to me. Yeah. Like, ah, fuck it, let them die. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy to me. So across the United States, theaters were closed, movie houses schools were closed and they prohibited public gatherings Mm -hmm. so it's kind of similar to today yeah it's nearly identical i think everything you've said is yeah they required uh people to wear masks and in philadelphia they'd put like spit kills for them not to be spitting Mm. what the people just spat out in public i guess yeah i guess it was common and they would call the people who didn't wear masks they would call them masks slackers <laughs> oh what do we call them now <laughs> i have no idea i know <laughs> but we don't want to offend those four people listening <laughs> so the spanish flu pandemic came in three waves and the second wave was the most fatal in the united states and by the early 1920s people had developed an immunity and life returned back to normal but that flu strain didn't just go away it didn't just pack its bags and be like all right well i'm out of here it mutated and it continued to pass through humans, pigs, and other a- mammals. And descendants of that 1918 strain make up the viruses we're fighting today. So we're still fighting against that 1918. Wow. Yeah. Strain. I mean, it's mutated and it's, you know, verged off, but it's it's from that. So, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty awful strain. Are we still in wave one? <laughs> yeah. We're, and for COVID-19, we're still in wave one. I we think- never left it. I think wave two is going to come simultaneously. <laughs> I think it's just... We're... Somebody in California has been infected with COVID-19 and the flu. Mm. I read that about a week ago. So how's that working out? For I you? have no idea. Do you think they'd fight each other like the two viruses? Like want to dominate? And like, mm. no, this is my body. No, this is my body. <laughs> but Maybe the f- that's a cure is another virus. <laughs> no. So the flu vaccine, it wasn't available until 1945 and that was just for the military and then in 1946 for the civilians was that the very first flu vaccine or like the flu vaccine for that particular strain i think it was the very first one yeah and but they made two strains and then that's when they noticed like we gave them the flu vaccine why are they still getting the flu that's when they noticed that it's a seasonal thing and they need to adjust it Mm. um so there is agencies today that In the beginning of the year, they'll kind of look to see what kind of strains are out there and they'll make the vaccines based on that. But it's not always 
100%. Like a few years ago, we had a flu vaccine that was only working like that would only work like 10% against the strains that were going around at that time. Yeah. So, you know, it's not always 100%. And people love saying this. I got the flu shot and I got the flu. If it's an inactivated virus that you're injected with, you cannot get the flu. It is a dead virus. What happens most of the time is that people will come in contact with somebody who's sick and it kind of like pops in their head like, shit, I need to get the vaccine. Yeah. And it takes two weeks for the vaccine to work. So if you are exposed within those two weeks, your chances are you're going to get the flu. Mm-hmm. So you won't get the flu from a shot from a flu shot as yeah. long as it's an inactivated virus. Yeah, I I know. I know about that. But there is one particular year. The only time it ever happened to me, probably 2016, I got the flu shot and I felt kind of shitty the next morning. Yeah, because um, what's happening is your antibodies that are being created, right? It, that virus goes into your body and your antibodies are like, Ooh, what's this? Right. Mm-hmm. And so it releases a chemical that usually makes your bones ache. Yes, that's what it was. So the so the shot didn't make you ache. It was your antibodies building and releasing that chemical that make your bones ache. Yeah, that was the one time though. Yeah. Um, it lasted a day. I just felt like, oh man, I feel it, and I did feel it in my bones. I felt achy, and yeah. I felt like I was. But it it, down. it wasn't the shot. It was your immune system. Good to know. Yeah, it, I I got the pneumonia shot a few years ago, and that happened to me. Do you get a flu shot every year? I do, uh huh. Yeah, I don't. I kind of skip a year or two. I don't know why. Really, just because it's, uh, I, I don't feel it's completely necessary. But then again, I'm not speaking for anyone. I'm just speaking for myself. Yeah. I skip a year just to maybe give my my body a break. I don't know why I do it. It's just it's happened that way. I haven't got one this year. Um, maybe I should. Maybe I mean I would this year because if you get COVID and the flu. That, yeah. I mean that's bad. I know. Is it bad for my body, my immune system, or what? What do you mean? Are you saying both simultaneously or are you saying... Like, I mean, if you get COVID or the flu, it's bad. And if you get them at the same time, that's worse. Yeah. Because your immune system's going way down. Yeah. So. <laughs> there, there only could be room for so many, right? I mean, they're going to breed. Isn't that how viruses work? <laughs> they're not going to breed. Don't they breed? No. They don't, so you don't have a tiny bit of virus and then it reproduces in your body? Yeah, no? but it's not going to breed with the flu. It's it's a different it's a different thing. <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean breeding with the flu. Oh meant, yeah, yeah. Like like there's only so much room in your body for for one. I mean, you can't have two. It's not going to double on you. It's just going to be two different. Yeah, it's straight. two different viruses that are affecting are infecting your cells and reproducing. But that would be double the damage. Yeah. Okay, I got you. So your immune system is going to be like shot. To yeah. Hell. <laughs> Well, I do take um, the emergency usually in the mornings, and then at night I'll take this uh, the uh, VIX immunity uh, melatonin, and I feel like that's been helping me. Mm. There's a few times where because of the season change, I get allergies and I feel kind of like hot and my throat itches a bit. Mm-hmm. And I wake up and maybe a day after that I'm, I'm fine, but that's just allergies. But it's scary during a pandemic to even get the allergies. As I said before, like I'm a pharmacy tech. And I've had people like want to argue with me about shots and vaccines because they're anti-vax. Mm-hmm. And it's, people don't realize that you can be allergic to something in, in the shot. Mm-hmm. Like the way people are allergic to aspirin. I know I've had many uh, patients that were allergic to red dye. They couldn't take pills that had red dye. Mm. So it is something that can happen where if you get a shot and you're allergic to something that's in there, but it doesn't mean that you're going to develop some type of mental health problem because of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or it's just, I don't know. So do you think those people avoid getting vaccines because of that reaction? If they were smart, they know that they're going to have a reaction to it, but they're going to know it's more beneficial because they're getting the vaccine. If they're allergic to say the red dye. And why, why is there red dye in there? What is that? No, about? no, no. I'm, I'm making an example. Like, oh. you know how people are, are allergic to aspirin? There's people that are allergic to something as silly as red <laughs> dye. You know, so if you're allergic to something that makes the vaccine, that's possible, but not likely. Yeah. And it's just kind of an anti-vax thing. I mean, yeah. and it's the way the flu shot is made. They're made in eggs. So if you're allergic to eggs, you can't get the flu vaccine. No. So, mm, interesting. You know what I'm saying? So it's not an like people want to be anti-vax about it. And it's just like, that's not how it works. Why is it made in eggs? It just grows or... Yeah, that's how they make it. Uh huh. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Never knew that. So get your flu shot. Especially during COVID because you don't want to get COVID (laughs) and the flu. But now vegans aren't going to get a flu shot. 
Well, they use eggs. Now we just <laughs> we've made a whole new strain of anti vaxxers the vegan anti vaxxers Like that's we shouldn't tell people that. Maybe no, well, they have to know that. Because what if somebody's allergic to eggs? That's true, but do vegans know this? I don't know, and I don't care. They do know. All two of them. <laughs> and it's really hard to make vaccines, especially against the virus, a virus, because viruses have very unique protein shells that protect them. They're mm-hmm. called capsids. Mm-hmm. And depending on the virus, it could be hard to get your antibodies to attach to it. For example, the flu, regular flu, it yeah. has a whole bunch of little hands on its outer shell. And your antibodies, they're shaped like like a Y. Yeah. So when they attach to the flu virus, they're able like to grab it. Like my little hands are going to connect to their little hands. Oh, I see. But something like HIV, HIV doesn't have a lot of hands like that on its outer shell. So when you have something that's shaped like a Y trying to connect and get inside of it, it can't do it properly because they're so spaced out. So that's why vaccines are not vaccines. Viruses are very hard to defeat because of their shells. They can't grab onto them. Yeah, depending on what type of virus it is. Oh. That's why it might take a while for them to make a vaccine for COVID. Even though we know about it and there's been other um, SARS viruses similar to that, but they're not that exact virus. And then also I read recently that people that have gotten COVID and have gotten better that their antibodies, for some reason, they no longer have those antibodies like a few months later. So they're able to get reinfected. Mm. So I'm wondering, how is that going to work with the vaccine? Is it going to have to be seasonal like the flu shot? Because it wears off. Yeah, yeah, it wears off. Yeah, because I I got tested for the antibodies. Uh I had the antibodies. But that was a long time ago, but back in... Oh, you did have the antibodies? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you had yeah, COVID. I, I told you this, didn't I? I didn't believe you. Why don't you, you don't believe anything I say. <laughs> I have to show you screenshots. <laughs> anyway, I'll, st- I'll, I'll send you my, my forms. <laughs> my I need form. to go over them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I told you this. Yeah, so, so if it's been a few months, then um, they may have left your... You may no longer have them and you could get reinfected. And I forgot I forgot where I read it, but they said in China, there's only only 4% of their population has antibodies currently in them. Mm-hmm. So the idea of doing it by herd immunity isn't possible because you need at least 60% of the population to have herd immunity to work, in order for herd immunity to work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this one's a toughie, this COVID-19. Yeah. And you can't take antivirals because people believe that antivirals kill the virus like the way antibiotics kill the bacterial infections antivirals don't do that antivirals stop it from reproducing in order for your antibodies that your body produce in order for them to get there and destroy the virus Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah interesting one i've learned a lot to be honest i think this is one i've learned the most of all the episodes because i don't know much about how that works yeah you're describing the little arms and stuff i never thought of that yeah because i was wondering why is it so difficult why is it hiv not not curable they can i i read that recently it was um some scientist i think from the university of california he's the one that thinks that that could be a reason why hiv is so hard is because they don't have a little a lot of little arms sticking out of their um, protein shells. Yeah. And so your the antibodies can't connect to them properly. Yeah, can't grasp them. Yeah. And then also HIV is really good at hiding in your body. So like the HIV is like the greased up deaf guy from Family Guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and all the security and the cops are trying to grab him. He's just slipping out. But yeah, by the time your body is alerted that you have HIV, it's too late because yeah. it is everywhere it's everywhere because it's so good at hiding inside your good cells and kind of masking itself yeah so you're just on medication for life at that point yeah i mean nowadays if you get hiv and you're on medication you know you could live a long yeah a long life a long magic (laughs) life it's not like the the um 80s yeah yeah well they they didn't know what they're dealing with at all well ronald reagan didn't care that the queers were dying 
So yeah, it was about leadership and he didn't give a fuck about the gay community. Mm -hmm. So when you have somebody like that leading you, it's not going to lead to good results right away. Yeah. But yeah, viruses are, are very hard to defeat. Yeah. It's like, um, they say, oh, COVID-19 doesn't discriminate. Kind of wish it would. Yeah. Um, I've read that vitamin D helps, I guess, protect you and, well, black Americans or just black people worldwide, you know, their their melanin protects them from the sun. Yeah. So they're not able to absorb as much. Quickly. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh, and, and produce the vitamin D. So a lot of times that's why their death rates are higher. Yeah. And then also because well, in America, Mar- you know, the rich don't give a shit about the poor. And a lot of times Hispanics and black people are part of the poor community. So on top of not being able to produce vitamin D as well as fair skinned people and then being poor and having to go out and work because our government isn't going to help us. It's just, you know, you're, of course, yeah. their death rates are going to be higher. So eat mushrooms, take supplements and spend more time in the sun. Yes. Yes. Go get a lot of sun. Yeah. Yeah. Take your shirt off. <laughs> if you're a woman, if you're a man. <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> But yeah, that's what I do. I make sure I get my hour walk every day just so I can get some sun. The other day, it was funny because I, I didn't get sun. I was indoors all day and I slept for 10 hours. And then I realized like, oh, wait, I need to get my daily dose of sun. And I was like chasing the sun because it was like about seven o'clock. <laughs> and I, I saw like a beam of light, like about half a mile down the street. And I was like, I better go and catch that sun. And I never made it. It like it set before I could get to it. And uh, yeah, it's just funny because I was like literally chasing for a stream of light and i watched it like set behind the buildings sorry I'm, yeah but now i know to leave no later than 5 p.m to make sure i get a good hour of of sun and that's my uh daily dose of vitamin vitamin d <laughs> but yes please get your flu shot because if you get both you're done for well, that was a very good and useful episode so what else happened in 1918 october 12th the cloquet fire City, I'm going to pronounce it Cloquet, Minnesota, and nearby areas destroyed in a fire, killing 453 people. Ooh. On August 4th, Adolf Hitler receives the Iron Cross First Class for Bravery on the recommendation of his Jewish superior, Lieutenant Hugo Gutmann. On December 1st, 1918, Iceland regains independence, but remains in a personal union with the King of Denmark, who also becomes the king of Iceland until 1944. On October 8th, American soldier Alvin York single-handedly attacks German gun nests, killing at least 25 and capturing 132 Germans. That's how it's done. It is. This one is a tidbit from my 1905 episode, (laughs) Rasputin. July 17th. The execution of the Romanov family by the order of the Bolshevik party and carried out by Cheka, former Emperor Nicholas II, his wife Alexandra, and his children, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, Alexei, and Jose. <laughs> <laughs> They're all shot in the Apertive House, Apertive House in Akaterinburg, Russia. On October 26, Cecil Chubb gives prehistoric monument, Stonehenge, to the British nation. Can they give it back? Nope. Well, that's all of the things that ever happened in 1918. We'll see you in 1919. Bye. Bye. Bye.